Hi guys, Richard Lackey here. I want to show you the basics of Filmic Pro so you can start shooting great looking video like this with your iPhone, wherever you are, whenever you want. Today we're going to take a look at the features and operation of Filmic Pro version 6 with the optional cinematographer's kit on an iPhone 7 Plus. Exactly a year ago I posted my tutorial for Filmic Pro version 5 and to date that video has had over 110,000 views. I hope this one helps you get the most possible out of Filmic Pro. Before we get started, I'd like to ask you to subscribe if you're not already. That way you'll get notified of new videos. First let's take a look at Filmic's main menu and how to set yourself up to record. A tap on the settings gear icon in the bottom right corner of the screen will open up the main menu. The first thing you'll want to do is decide your recording resolution and aspect ratio. Tap on resolution to see the settings. The first thing you'll notice is the choice of aspect ratios along the top. 16 to 9 is standard and will record the full image you see on the screen. Sometimes you might be shooting for a different aspect ratio to achieve a widescreen look or a square for Instagram. Choosing an aspect ratio other than 16:9 will turn on crop source to overlay. I recommend turning this off, which will still give you the framing guide for your chosen aspect ratio, but also record the full image area outside the guides. This will give you the ability to adjust your framing later in post. Next you'll want to select your resolution. I recommend shooting at 2160p in most situations, as you'll record the most detailed image for later post processing. However, one good reason to choose a lower resolution is if you want to use high frame rates to record slow motion. Below the resolution setting, you're able to choose the recording quality. This directly determines the recording bitrate, and it's important to set this as high as possible. There are four options, Economy, Apple Standard, Filmic Quality, and Filmic Extreme. Tap on Frame Rate to edit Capture and Playback frame rate settings. The default is 24 frames per second capture and playback, but you can select any frame rate which is available for your chosen resolution. Tap on audio to open audio settings. You can select your microphone source and if an external microphone is plugged in, it should appear here by default. Turning on video only will allow you to record with no audio. Tap on device to open device settings. Tap on presets to save particular combinations of settings as custom presets to easily call up later. Tap on CMS to edit content management settings. Hardware settings enable Filmic Pro to be used with various external hardware options, such as the DJI Osmo Mobile, Moondog Anamorphic Adapter, and B-Script 35mm Depth of Field Adapter. Filmic Sync lets you sync your presets to a cloud storage account, allowing you to apply them easily to multiple devices. Tap Community to find all the ways you can connect with Filmic Pro on social media. Tap Overview to see a summary of your current settings. Turn on and off image stabilization depending on your needs. Tap on camera to select which camera Filmic will record. Toggle grid lines on and off by tapping guide. Lastly, you can tap information to find links to tutorials and see the current version of Filmic Pro installed. Now that you've set up Filmic Pro, let's look at the image analysis tools Filmic gives you to assist with exposure and focus. Tap on the A in the bottom left corner of the screen to show the live analytics available at the top of the screen. The zebra stripes overlay shows areas of overexposure with red stripes. The clipping overlay indicates areas of the image which are extremely over or underexposed and will have no detail recorded. The false color overlay can be very useful when judging overall exposure. Green areas are within the proper exposure range. The focus peaking overlay indicates objects in focus with a blue outline and areas of critical focus in green. Filmic Pro provides live histogram and waveform monitors. Cycle through them by tapping on the timecode area to cycle between luminance histogram, RGB histogram and waveform. Before recording anything, you'll need to make sure your white balance is set correctly. We'll also take a look at the custom gamma curves. Tap the colored circles on the bottom left to open the imaging panel. 
In the temperature tab of the imaging panel, you'll find complete manual control over white balance. You can use the matrix to select any temperature and tint value in the range. The white balance presets give you a good starting point for shooting under tungsten incandescent light, sunlight, overcast conditions, and fluorescent lighting. The gamma tab lets you select the gamma encoding curve. The natural curve is the default iPhone gamma curve, but dynamic, flat, and log are custom curves intended to give more image flexibility in post-production. I recommend using the flat gamma profile, but take care using the custom gamma curves. You will need to have some knowledge of basic color correction in post to correct the image and get the benefits of using these curves. The color tab gives you control over individual RGB channels, saturation and vibrance. Drag the round exposure reticle to auto expose the image, then tap to lock it. Either reticle will appear white when unlocked, or red when locked. Generally, you don't want exposure to vary during a shot. The same principle applies to the square focus reticle. Drag it anywhere on the image to focus. Leave it unlocked on an object to track focus, or locked to lock focus. Open the manual controls by tapping the round icon on the bottom left of the screen. The manual exposure dial will appear on the left and the focus zoom dial will appear on the right. Use the exposure dial to set a specific ISO and tap to lock it. Once the ISO is locked, you can use the dial to vary the shutter speed. If the live image analysis tools are active, you will see zebras when you adjust your shutter speed, indicating when areas of the image are overexposed. Adjusting the focus dial manually sets your focus point. To record, simply tap the record button to start and stop recording. Tap the play button next to the record button to open the filmic library. Here you'll be able to scroll through all of your recorded clips. Tap on a clip to open it for playback and editing. The scissor tool allows you to trim a clip. It will save both the trimmed and original clips. The image adjustment sliders allow you to make adjustments to exposure, contrast, white balance, saturation and tint. Any adjustments made are saved as a new clip along with the original clip. I recommend leaving this alone and making all color adjustments in post. The downsampling tool allows you to reduce the size and quality of a clip. Both downsampled and original clips are saved. You can share a clip to a specific target app and you can copy the clip to the camera roll. From the filmic library you can swipe a clip to the left to delete it. Clip select can be used to select specific clips to upload or delete. You can copy a selected clip to the camera roll, upload to a share target, or delete the selected clips. That's it for the basics. There are some more advanced features as well, and the best way to learn more is to download a copy of the Filmic Pro user manual and give it a read. Learning how to use Filmic Pro is one thing. Learning how to create and capture great shots comes down to a lot of experimentation and practice. I encourage you to shoot your own tests under many different lighting conditions and really let the tools become second nature. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more, check out my other videos on the channel, and leave me some questions or comments.